You know it's super fly when Day Bar is open. Hip hop review news plus breaking new artists, pop culture, current events with an urban view of it. This is all things hip hop delivered raw, unpolitically correct. The fans' perspective, putting all artists in check. Dope content, current hot sh by remarkable men. Our thoughts clearly. Welcome to Audio Theory. Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well as the like button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? Dude, it's been good, man. It's been great. Uh, so you last week, we'll get to the Columbia trip in a second. Uh, just had my birthday um, last week Happy as well. So had this, Again. Thank you, brother, appreciate it. 33. That was a good number. Jesus' number. So happy about that. Um, but bro, exhausting, bro. Like, I, I, I know we took a break from this for two weeks, which we said we probably, we don't usually do. But bro, it was needed, bro. Like, I would love to get into, like, you know, how, how, how has your recovery been since Columbia? Because um, your uh -huh. mind, rightly so, has been all over the place. But I want to hear about how your recovery is going. Uh, my recovery was really rocky. Um, when I first got back, as you can imagine, I was incredibly tired. Like I landed at midnight. Um, my girl picked me up and then of course I didn't really go straight to bed. I kind of washed. Yeah. Cause you, like, could, you low key have like adrenaline, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm pretty sure I, I, I oh, I got McDonald's, I think. Um, mm. cause I was starving. Like they didn't, they fed, fed us like one of the jankiest fucking cold sandwiches ever. And like. The meat was maybe like 5% of the sandwich. It was like just a big ass loaf of bread with some cold like turkey and like a little slice of cheese. On JetBlue? On, uh, no, this was Copa. Copa, okay. I hate that airline, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, that exp the experience coming home really sucked. Um, it, those are the instances where I really like appreciate America because yeah. some of these other countries, like when it comes to just being organized and and customer service all that stuff like i feel like america has that shit down and like the customer really is king here but in other countries it's like i don't know what to tell you like you're fucked but it's not my problem yeah yeah um, yeah 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 dude what's funny because uh we had we we left a different time bro like they were about to cancel my flight and bro like i was like in a panic initially like bro first of all like figure it out like send me to new york to go to florida like yo the idea of me staying one more night here is not happening bro like it's not like i need to get the fuck out of here so yeah thankfully i got home but i, I was meant to get home that day like around to like 4 30 in the afternoon didn't get home till 10 p.m so i was just like damn dog like i really wanted to have like a day of like rest and relax because we all took that monday off for a reason um yeah but yeah, it, it is what it is. The travel back was uh, was a bitch. But how was uh, like you just uh, gathering momentum throughout the, the the following weeks as far as energy was? Energy was super low. I, I probably didn't feel a hundred percent until like the end of the following weekend. Um, wow. And I didn't. It's not like I. I mean, I did drink during the week to kind of. I think I don't know if my body was going through withdrawals or like I just wanted to feel <laughs> better. But I popped a couple. Uh, uh, white claws out and just took it easy really um didn't like go to the gym like i just wanted my body to feel normal and like actually sleep in um and i think i was also like partially coming down just from all the like sensory overload and just being around yeah. everyone like i went from that to being literally alone for like five days because my fiance went to her bachelorette so that was like a that's probably nice though itself. that's probably nice like just to have like yeah. force force obviously if she was there it would be fine but like the forced quietness is not a bad thing either yeah i think that was good because I, I didn't feel obligated to like go out or you know have like cuddle time and watch movies and shit like i just wanted to just sit there and like do me for yeah yeah, yeah 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 but i was also lonely just not having anyone like next to me to talk yeah because it went from like eight dudes like yeah. constantly to talk to to like nothing <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> nice dude. yo for me like again it was um dude i don't even think i've recovered yet to be perfectly fucking honest bro like and, and i might have exaggerating like it was um the moment i landed the next day was taco tuesday my boy wanted to take me out for drinks the night before my birthday then the day of my birthday was a wednesday wifey took me out for drinks thursday i had to do something for work and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like family, party, drinking, up till 7 
have smoking hookah, like just like again things like I'm grateful, but like it would have been dope if like I had like Columbia a week off and then but again, dude, super grateful. You know, family came down, we had a ball. Uh, I mustered up the energy somehow, but like, yo, like we went hard Saturday night, like so hard that like my neighbors called the cops on me. Oh shit. Like neighbors yeah, that dude, you I'm like, normally have a good relationship with, or they were, they were always- I don't know who, I don't know who, like oh, okay. the cop didn't tell us, but like, damn, like I only go out, like I never throw, like I, I've thrown through two parties, my um, housewarming party, which is fine. And then this one, which is less people, but maybe less people makes it louder in some kind of weird way. Um, like maybe the echoing and stuff. But again, it was like 2 a.m. We should have gone inside, but we're like, all right, give it like another 10 minutes, give it another 10 minutes. And then we just see like the flashing lights just like going into the backyard. And I'm like, bro, these motherfuckers couldn't just say, yo, keep it down. Like you had to get the cops involved, dog. But like, right. it wasn't a big deal. But um, yeah, dude, I'm still trying to recover. Luckily, bro, like uh, Billy got here yesterday and he was like, man, I was at a wedding. I was, Billy, to everyone, uh, Billy's my best friend. He's uh, from college. He's staying with me for a couple of weeks, which is normal tradition. Um, but he was like, bro, I, just, I drank so much in Toronto for this wedding. Would it be cool if we took this week easy and just relaxed on the couch? I was like, my nigga, don't say anything <laughs> else. Like, no, like, you had me at, would it be cool? Like, we'll yeah. see, like, yo, so like, I'm super grateful for that, bro, because if it was like another week of like, yo, let's go out during the week, let's go get a drink. And I'm like, bro, that's the last thing I want to do, bro. Like, and even like working out, bro, I, I, I got back in the swing of things, but like, yo, I'm still like, I think my body's like, like, dude, like think about like Columbia, bro. We'll get to highlights in a second, but like, bro, that was wake up from 10 a.m. till four morning tequila, tequila, tequila. My body was trying to like absorb that. And then to come back and then it was fucking like Henny Sangria shots. And I was just like, bro, my stomach is like, bro, like, I'm about to explode if you don't take this shit easy right now. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm almost there, but we did all good things. And these are, these are good problems to have, but, um, but yeah, man, just fully try to get, um, recover. But uh, I wanted to ask you, bro, because I obviously have my highlights. What were a couple of your highlights of the uh, Columbia trip? I'd say the highlights for me that just come to mind. Um, I definitely loved the, the van ride to, um, uh, Guatape, I think is how it's pronounced. Oh, the, so the um, boat ride? The boat ride and the, the van ride, I think. Well, the, the van ride to get to the boat, right? Yeah, like, the van ride yeah, to get yeah. to the boat. Um, well, actually, the highlight from the van, I'd say, mostly was the the ride out to the clubs that same night. Yeah. Um, when we were all dressed up and stuff, like, and playing music, because, um, I don't know, the energy was just, like, on point all around. The boat ride was super dope, and relaxing and nice to get away from like the the lounge lounge club club environment and just yeah. enjoy our presence um and then outside of that uh i don't know just like kicking it at the airbnb and like having conversations with everyone individually was also super dope and the fact i keep thinking about the fact that it worked out when i had that initial cancellation the day we were f flying or the day i was flying at least and then ending up with the Airbnb that was like a better fit and yeah, um, just it just went smoothly. Yeah, dude, that was yes. Yeah, so everybody listening and watching on YouTube. So yeah, we had a, a dope Airbnb that we booked probably what two and a half months ago, or at least two months yeah. ago. Uh, I think even three and a half, four at yeah. this point. And the guy decided twenty four hours before we were meant to land in Columbia to cancel our reservation. So yeah. uh, <laughs> luckily, the player came through and got something better. And dude, honestly, like locations everything like that's why i was comparing it to my last trip to columbia from two months ago bro honestly like two different experiences bro like like when you only go to the city once you just like make the most of it but like it is what it is you're going to go back home but when you're in that shit for four nights bro, like, <laughs> i was like yo get me up by the last time I'm like bro this night has to finish bro it has to finish because i'm like yo i'm gonna die out here <laughs> um, the drinking was just so excessive, dude. So excessive. But um, yeah, man, I love all those highlights that you mentioned. Yeah, definitely the the van ride back and forth was dope. Um, yeah, the energy that Mickey brought. Like, so Mickey is uh, Blair's uh, oldest brother. Uh, that was on the trip, and like we were already two nights in, right? So we were like already like, yo, like fuck, dude, we're on no sleep. We're on a fucking bus for two hours. Like, what the fuck? And then he just had so much energy. Like everyone was like forced to like, yo, wake the fuck up. We're gonna rage at least two more nights. So. That yeah. was dope. Um, dude, honestly, for me, selfishly, was like, um, 
getting to know the wedding party, bro. Like, cause like, obviously like you already know these people very well. They kind of know each other a little bit from like what I gather. But for me, I just felt like, you know, I was Sarah and Blair's friend. So to finally, you know, be able to vibe and we'll have like reference points and it won't be awkward at the wedding. You know what I mean? Cause like, yeah, yeah. it's already like a, a destination wedding. Like you're like, fuck, like I don't, are there going to be clicks? Like, who am I going to talk to? Like the groom and bride are going to be busy the whole time. So I can't really just chill with them the whole time. So it was cool that like, we all got along. It's like a very deep, I had some pretty intense conversations with like everybody on the trip at some point, which is dope. So that was a highlight. And then, dude, when we got the uh, the DJ to play your music at um, oh, yeah, the yeah. club, Almost that forgot. was that was a vibe. Uh, yeah, that was a super vibe as well. Um, you know, the crazy thing is, like, I remember like you or Mickey talking about, like, oh, let's ask the DJ, but I completely forgot about it. And then all of a sudden, like, 15 minutes after we get into the club or whatever, I I just hear it and like. It sounded incredible on whatever speakers they had. And I know for me, like, it's one of the few songs that I made where I'm like, if this is like the one of 10 songs or whatever that everyone goes crazy at a concert or whatever, like I would do this. And just hearing it there, I was like, oh shit. Like it actually has a nice bounce to it and everything. We're all obviously drunk and like going crazy and shit. So yeah, that energy was was super dope. Yeah, that was super dope. And, uh, and Blair's talking about Ignore Me um, that he dropped a couple of months ago or so. Yeah, so we got that on the loud ass speakers, bro. So like, yeah, the phenomenal trip, bro. Like phenomenal trip, great experiences, memories we'll have for a lifetime. And uh, yeah, dude, I'm just, I know people canceled last minute as well. Um, but I'm glad everyone who showed up showed up and like showed out for you, bro. Because obviously it's about you and sending you off on the right path for uh, for marriage in a couple, which is you know, like two or three months is fucking crazy. Um, yeah. So yeah, bro, I'm glad you had a great time. I had a great time. Um, and yeah, we'll have memories forever, bro. So um, that was awesome. Again, pre- and I appreciate the invite. But um, our first episode in almost two weeks. I think a lot has happened, bro. Like, I don't really know. <laughs> like, uh, I think in Colombia, like, we were all, like, relatively off the grid, but we're excited about certain things that dropped. Um, but I guess before I go into, like, new music, uh, what were a couple of songs that if you had to put, like, these were the theme songs of the trip that you were, like, most, like, when you listen to, like, now, you're like, Daniel, that was a fucking dope moment. Yeah. For me, personally, um, definitely Diamonds Dancing. Wait, no. It's for some reason, whenever I search for the song, like it doesn't come up. So I'm wondering if it has a different name, but I'm pretty sure it's called Diamonds Dancing by uh, Young, Young Thug. Um, okay. Yeah, Diamonds Dancing by Young uh, Young Stoner Life, Young Thug, Gunna, like that whole squad. Okay. Um, so when we played it on the van, that shit just blew my mind. I always liked the song, but like, I don't know why, but for that moment, it was perfect. Um, in addition to uh, Selection by Lil Tecca. That was a um, banger, bro. Banger. Fucking love that song. Um, it's only like a minute and 10 seconds, but it's still... Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what that's what's, uh, trips me out a lot about a lot of the songs I like is they're short like that. But, I mean, obviously, it's a great tactic because you're going to play that shit 50 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. The numbers are going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. And as long as you get the hook at least twice, it's like mm-hmm. a banger. So Right. And then lastly... Uh, I'd probably say Addy uh, by, yeah. by Gunna. That was another one that was uh, fire and like a, a popular one amongst the crew. Yeah, but definitely. I mean, the, when when those hit on the van, those were uh, were bangers. Yeah, dude, I mean, honestly, I think you probably took two of mine. Selection and Addy were a good one. Um, your friend Danny was playing a lot of fucking Spanish bangers. So that mm-hmm. was good. Uh, he had one song with Chris Brown and Raul Alejandro, which was you know, a banger that everyone was losing their mind to when like, even if you didn't speak Spanish. Well, the song was fucking fire, 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 fire. I guess probably those are the main three or four. Um, I mean, Corey was in his bag playing a bunch of like LA shit that I never heard of before, which was dope. We had some old school time. We were playing fucking like Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, uh, Fabulous and French Montana ball drops. Like it was just like a, like, I know you love karaoke. This is probably like, the closest thing we could do to karaoke in Colombia. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like a bunch of drum, but a fucking, uh, band just you know singing to the top of their lungs like all these classic fucking songs 100 percent. yeah it was it was a good balance uh, amongst everything and i was kind of concerned because like i had my own little playlist that i was prepared to play if like no one else had any ideas or whatever but i think everyone at some point had a chance to yeah. take over the bluetooth and like 
no matter what time of day it was or whatever, I was like, this vibe is perfect. Like when you played Mac by the pool for a little bit. And yeah. All that shit. Just to like relax. Yeah. 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 So it was a, a really good balance overall. Yeah, totally, man. So yeah, definitely some hits. We'll probably add a couple of those to the uh, the uh, Heat of the Week playlist at the end of this. Um, cool, man. But speaking of Max, I mean, I don't really think it's wild, bro, because I don't really think anything of substance has dropped since we went away, which is crazy to me. Because, I, again, I know Young Thug dropped Punk, but either it's not getting the nerves or it just came out in a weird time. Like, I don't know, but I feel like no one's really talking about it. I ran through it once when I got back from Columbia. And I was like, this is cool. But like, I didn't feel like it was anything like, yo, I, oh, dude, play that song back. I got to hear it again. Um, I did enjoy the Mac Miller feature at the end of the album. But like, I don't know, you, did you get a chance to like run through it? I did run through it, but I didn't like have a proper listening session. Um, to your point, I, I wasn't super impressed with my first listen or glance through or whatever you want to call it. Um, I did like the one with J. Cole. I think it's called Stress. Um, mm -hmm. I think it has Travis Scott on it too, right? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Um, or some other guy. I've never heard of him. Uh, but I think it does have Travis too, if I'm not mistaken. But overall, yeah, I was like, it doesn't sound like something that's going to be get like stellar reviews. Um, by no means bad, but it didn't sound like something that was going to be talked about for like weeks to come or anything yeah yeah which again i think it's odd um so again i'll definitely gonna give it another run through levels are right because obviously like it's all perspective like where you're at mentally when you interpret these kind of kind of music but like yeah like, it was odd though because like when he dropped so much fun that was an immediate like oh my god this is a special body of fucking work and this was like like i get you credit like, i don't know like, i just it, it it just didn't hit for me an in initial run through but like, i'll give it a, another chance i think young thug is literally like one of the like, the most talented artists we have out right now so i can't imagine him putting out like 18 trash songs right so i gotta definitely give it another uh run through uh what i did enjoy and what i did play a lot bro i don't know if you ever walked by my bedroom but like i only played the mac miller mixtape over and over yeah. over again yeah so faces i guess came out like in 2014 and um it just it just got released when we were in columbia so last weekend on every streaming platform bro so many nice songs that fucking thing mm -hmm. I, what I, I love is the uh it takes you even though his sound is timeless there's a lot of reference points to things that were happening at the time so 2014 yeah. uh drake just dropped uh if you're reading this it's too late obviously on top of being deemed the next or already the big thing in hip hop, and it's like that he doesn't take a jab at Drake, but he's like, "Yo, I'm doing a Drake feature." You know, yeah. There's like a couple like things that bring you back to that time, and it feels like this album was the album or this body of work for Mac was when it went from fun, drunk, and high kid to like man being super introspective about life. And the reason why that was clear to me, and I don't know if you got a chance to run through it as well, but he has three songs back to back that is like dude he's 22 but like this guy is fucking years ahead so one song is happy birthday where he's just talking about the joy of being born and all that shit uh the next song is wedding day um or wedding i think and he's obviously like that's a high and like that's the, the, really the next high in your life after the day you're born and then he has funeral and these songs are all back to back to back so it's like nine minutes of just, just like the entire human experience bro and i'm like this motherfucker is like, yo, who even thinks this shit at 22, let alone like, you know, it's, just, it's crazy to me. So yeah, um, definitely, that was one release I was definitely uh, happy about because it kind of surprised me. Didn't expect anything. And then like, I woke up, you know, that Friday morning in Columbia. I'm like, oh shit, we have a whole fucking Mac album? Like, yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I had a chance to listen to some of it on my flight. I couldn't like download it all, but I tried to get as many songs in as I could. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like when you... I really enjoyed hearing it uh, Mac by the pool mm -hmm. But for some reason He's one of the few Like deceased artists When I listen to him Like I almost get sad mm. um, Not in a bad way I'm just like Fuck Like we really lost him right. um, And he's also One of those artists I feel like It's easy to relate To a lot of the stuff That he talks about um, like right, because even though he's like, younger than us, he's still like so ahead of his time. It almost feels right. like he's like a peer kind of a thing. Yeah, and yeah, like I love Pop Smoke, for instance, but like I didn't live his lifestyle, so it doesn't like hit as hard or whatever. Whereas Mac is just 
kind of like a regular dude from I don't know. I'm assuming middle class family who right. didn't grow up in the hood and do all kinds of crazy shit. Like he's just speaking about stuff that the average person could relate to. Um, but I, I did hear several tracks. Um, I really liked the Rick Ross one. I think it was called Insomniac or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, from what I gathered from the album, like he did a really good job of keeping it interesting throughout. I know a lot mm -hmm. of artists, especially nowadays, and the younger guys, like. The entire project it's cool that it's cohesive and like sounds the same but after like five songs in you're like all right like it's the same what else you talking about yeah. yeah whereas mag it's like every song has like a concept and his bars are just crazy but not like too over the top to the point where yeah. you don't understand it um so yeah i really miss the dude but yeah he's he's definitely one of my favorite artists yeah, yeah, yeah. So if anyone hasn't checked it out, check out Faces. It's on every uh, streaming platform now. I guess the other Mac Miller news kind of like, which is sad, but also like, almost like you feel happy in a sense for the family that I guess the uh, the drug dealer who gave, who mixed, I guess what well, he, I guess he was buying uh, Percocets or something. And it, like, I don't know what he was buying, but it wasn't, I thought it was cocaine at first, uh, but apparently it wasn't cocaine, but um I guess the drug dealer they found who sold him the stuff that was mixed with fentanyl admitted to it and now they're just trying to see how much time he's going to get in jail so uh, I know we were talking offline about that but that's like I feel like that's kind of a good thing bro because I, I, mean, I, I know in Colombia we were like shook about even trying stuff because like dude like the fuck like I don't know what this shit is mixed with like we just saw like three famous people just die like in the past four months so I was like um, so I'm glad that these people are being prosecuted so hopefully that scares people away from fucking like you know doing this stuff for sure yeah it's it's crazy how a lot of powerful people that you would think would have access to like the trustworthy best. yeah the best plug yeah. right you would think yeah, yeah. yeah are um are dying from this stuff and i've heard even like for weed smokers out there i heard synthetic weed can kill you as well um I don't know anything about that, but the fact that like these quote unquote uh, safe drugs or drugs that people wouldn't even consider drugs yeah, every can day still day. kill you is is terrifying. So it's like, shit, I guess I should just stick to hookah and henny or whatever. <laughs> I'm not trying to die prematurely either. Yeah, dude, it's just wild. Like, cause think about like the the mindset, right? Like that, like it gives even more reason to the thought. Remember when he passed away, like talked about Mac or even like the famous actor like Michael K or something that passed away a couple months ago like it's people like sad like oh my it is sad it's tragic but like oh they were like kind of going the route like oh but he had so many demons you know overdose it is what it is it's like nah man I think he just wants to have a fucking normal Friday night and he had yeah. terrible fucking drugs like yeah which is fucking even more depressing because like it mm -hmm. was like he was trying to fucking take his life it's like yo I want to live my life and like have a good night right. like which everyone yeah. has done and is entitled to do Right. And, and it's uh, what saddens me as well is when I read the comments, a lot of people are pointing. I mean, obviously, if you're going to do drugs or whatever, like and you pass away, like ultimately, that wasn't a decision you had to make. But at the same time, I think people in the comments tend to be really insensitive, like, oh, well, you deserved it. Like, yeah, it's drugs on you. Or some shit. Yeah. yeah. As if like everyone doesn't have some sort of vice or go through shit or simply just like want to have fun in an environment they think is safe like people are so quick to be like oh you fucking idiot like rot right because... if you're gonna try a hardcore drug hardcore quote unquote like i think the safest place is in your home <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah. going, like just chilling watching tv or listening to music like you would think right. that is the safest fucking space now like that's being taken away from us because like Again, right. I don't know the reason. I wish like we had someone on like to explain the logic behind like cutting it up with that shit. Um, I think so. My brother, if I if I recall correctly, I think it like makes it the fentanyl and stuff makes it more addictive, um, and potentially kind of like with the baking soda stuff, like potentially you can get more out of less. Yeah. Okay. Um, but obviously, if you're a fucking drug dealer who could care less if some random person dies you might not necessarily you're not gonna be a scientist and like have the perfect dosages uh dosage and like test it out yourself and do all these other right. things that like the fucking fda or whatever might do so i think and obviously everyone's body's different uh as well so you know 
maybe I could smoke a joint and be fine, but maybe this person over here is gonna fucking hyperventilate or some shit. Yeah. I don't know. So um, I think that's why they they cut it with that crap. Yeah. Well, again, I'm glad the the justice system seems to come through for this one. So uh, shout out to Mac and his family, and hopefully, you know, justice is served soon. Uh, I guess one more piece of music kind of came out like in between us leaving, but I don't think we spoke about it too much. Was the uh, the Don Tolliver album? Uh, what was it Life of like that Life of uh, uh, Life of the Don? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pun. pun I yeah. Guess on so. His name. What are you? Um, what were your thoughts on it? And obviously, let the people know what you got going on right after this episode. Yeah. Um, so I did have a listen to the album. Again, one of like those artists that is new, and I'm just really excited about. I think everyone mm-hmm. there's a common theme uh, about him that I've heard from many fans, and they they just like his unique voice mm-hmm. and like mellow style, and it, it's very spacey, like drug friendly music not that i do drugs to listen to it but i guess people who do do drugs what if you did would enjoy it um and, I, and it, his visuals and everything are crazy too i'm sure crazy. Like shrooms and shit would make yeah, it fun yeah, yeah. but uh when i first listened to it i was a little underwhelmed just because i think it was a bit too like slow paced and r&b ish mm. for my personal personal taste when i listened again i, I began to like it more but i I guess I, I wanted more bangers. Um, unfortunately, like I'm just addicted to hard hitting beats and stuff. And uh, I didn't get as much as I wanted out of it. But again, by no means a bad album. I just was anticipating a little bit more. I'm going to see him in concert tonight. So maybe that'll change my mind. Uh, and maybe he'll like the, the experience of being in person, everything might change my attitude towards it but uh i think it could have been a little bit better but overall i I still think it was a nice body of work yeah same dude it's funny you said r&b because that was like kind of the the main theme that i got from it i really compared it to like he sounds like a like a ladies friendly r&b version of gunna like Mm -hmm. the beats all kind of sound the same but all still unique but this was like i don't know like i feel like his first album wasn't I, I could be wrong. I, like, I know the album dropped during COVID, like, like the midst of it, so I could be wrong. But I feel like his last album wasn't so directed at the females. Like, I feel like this, no. like except for like two songs, his entire album was about like chicks, which is fine because it's still very good. But I was just like, oh, like I, I don't, I just didn't expect that. I expected like I don't know, like rage music a little bit, like yeah. like, like slow rage music is what I expected from him. So dude, good for him for fucking giving me something different. Um, there were a couple of songs that I really, I think I told you that I really fucking enjoyed. Um, let me see if I can pull them up quick. Uh, the one with uh, Baby Keem, Outer Space, I thought it was a banger. Um, I thought You with Travis Scott was dope and Bogus, the last song of the album. Mm-hmm. Those three were the really the, the standout for me. Is there any one song in particular from this track, from this body of work, or a lot, another one that you're like the most excited to see him perform? I think what you need um, for a combination of reasons. Granted, it was like I think the first single off of this project that he released, but like I love the music video. It was actually mm-hmm. in Colombia. Oh, um, right, I know that. Nice. Mm-hmm. Not in Medellin. I think it was in Bogota or whatever, but. Uh, The video is dope. I just love the chorus, like everything about that song. I played it a million times. Uh, Bogus was dope as well. Another, probably my second favorite. And then, I don't know, I'd probably say, uh, what is it, Flocky Flocky or whatever with Travis. That was a good one. Um, So yeah, those are my top three. It actually, this project kind of made me compare him to Ty Dolla Sign. And I, I think I've heard this comparison elsewhere too, where like when he's on a when he's featured, like he absolutely fucking crushes it. When it's oh, his it own is, project, and, yeah. yeah, it's it's a little a little on the drier side. Um, granted, I mean I'm sh- sure it's it's much more difficult to hit it out of the park when you have like twelve songs back to back. But uh, I did love Ty Dolla Sign's last album, so I'm hoping like this third one, Don Tolliver will just like knock it out of the park. Yeah, but I also see a lot of, like, back to the Gunna comparison, like, a lot of, like, it took us a while to properly understand what Gunna was trying to do on the Warner album. Mm-hmm. I think this, that, like, I think there's a, enough here. Because even when I played it, I played the album back, like, maybe, like, one and a half times at the gym. And I was like, oh, that song with uh, Travis is pretty fucking fire. Where initially, I was like, ah, it's fine. So, like, I yeah. think 
to a make grow on you some more. I'm sure, dude, I'm sure after you see it live, you're going to play it back and play, yeah. oh, that, that was pretty dope. For sure. Yeah, Gunna was, was one of the biggest mistakes I've made in terms of, like, making a judgment call too early. Mm -hmm. Uh, granted, Don Tolliver, I've always been a fan since I first heard him on Can't Say with uh, Travis. But I'm sure tonight my rating for this project will will increase. Yeah, yeah. So I'm eager to hear about that. What um, do, you, do you know who's opening for him? Is anyone opening for him? I'm not sure. They didn't really list anything on the site. I, he, he has to have some sort of opener because Isaiah Rashad, which I saw a couple weeks ago, he had an opener um, who was also on TDE. I had never heard of him. Um, I would still have to go back and, and check for his name, but uh, there's no way Don Tolliver doesn't have someone opening for him. You think so, right? There's no way like you just give yeah. you know an up and coming act like that just like an hour and a half. Just to, I would I would assume so, but yeah, cool, bro, definitely give us a review about that um, next week. Excited to hear about it. So what else? Um, all right, so I guess to that my earlier point, like it felt a little bit like the music releases. Um, so much so that I think NBA Youngboy had one week where he beat Drake. But I think since Drake and Kanye has, have dropped, Drake has had the number one album eight out of nine weeks. Like, dude, that's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. Album that everyone was like, ah, whatever, one of his worst albums or blah, blah, blah. Like, it, either his fans or fucking stands. But then I just think over time, like we were just saying, you remove the comparison to whatever, and you're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I'm probably gonna wanna listen to this more. Cause, I mean, bro, eight out of nine weeks when there's been plenty of shit that dropped, but yeah. bro, like, he's on his sixth week, eighth week, and still doing more numbers of Young Thug. Like, that's surprising to me. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a combination of one, Drake is obviously fucking talented and amazing and has a. Uh, pretty um uh not pretty really dedicated fan base mm -hmm. but i also think the timing <clears throat> excuse me was perfect because there wasn't really anyone else who i mean besides donda that could compete with him and i know young doug like is up there in terms of like being one of the like new generation goats or whatever but i i don't think besides him i, I can't recall really anyone that was popular enough to overtake Drake unless they did yeah. one of these uh streaming tactics that everyone seems to figure out like yeah I feel like only Travis or Kendrick could have like dethroned him at this point yeah yeah, yeah dude that's so still super super impressive bro because again it, it felt like um I don't know it felt like the couple of weeks after the, the the two albums dropped Donda and CLB that we were mm -hmm. just gonna move on to like the next thing and it's cool to see that we really haven't. Like, at least, like, people are still playing girls, you know, girls want girls, way too sexy. Um, I think more people are fucking with the other, like, the 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 other tracks on the album, like, No Friends in the Industry. I think we played that shit a few times in Columbia. Like, like mm -hmm. there's a bunch of really good songs on this. So, um, yeah, and it's just cool to see, bro, because, again, I, I was nervous for both of them. And I guess Donda has still done pretty relatively well. First, it's gonna be like, all right, they took over this one week of music, and then like, all right, we just moved on. Like, we move on with everything fucking else. Like, it's it's nice to see there's been consistency at the top. Like, if you give people quality music, that they're gonna actually embrace it, and not just move on to the next thing. For sure. Yeah, and I think Drake is like one of the kings of creating a vibe for like any mood, mm -hmm. or creating a song for any vibe, however you want to spin it. Like, whether it's the relationship you're at a party you just want to chill like there's on clb and all every other album like there's a song for that for everything for everything yeah. you want to get aggressive you want to smoke weed you want to just be with a chick yeah it's it's a vibe for everything so yeah just shout out to the king for uh for doing that and then um i know we were excited we're obviously both uh massive big sean fans so why don't you tell people about some of like the stuff that he's been doing and uh I guess kind of a buzz for hopefully like an album drop soon, right? Yeah. Um, so he released a, a new single, a hit boy called What a Life. Uh, super fire track. I think just like Nas, he and Hit Boy are like a, a match made in heaven. Really, for um, real, dog. Like it's wild. Yeah. And I don't know how far back they go, but, and I don't know. I mean, obviously, Hit Boy is the common denominator. So I don't know if, if 
Hit Boy could link up with anybody and be like their perfect right. match. But it's clear that him and Big Sean have a good chemistry. Um, and he's done a lot of promo for this new track. So I feel like he, like to your point, he has to have some sort of project coming out because it's been all over the Graham Tories and all up in the, in the, the videos. And everything. Yeah, yeah. So that, um, the video was crazy for it. Like he had the fucking like thousand Ds on him and like it was like that shit really happened. Um, I think he did like a like an hour long freestyle, not an hour, like, but multiple freestyles on LA Leakers, which is like, mm-hmm. you don't really do that shit unless you're like, because like, again, that could be, that could end very poorly for some people. Like, right. like you're yeah. going to be destroyed. So I feel like you're only going to rip the embarrassment, quote unquote, if you actually have something you're going to promote very, very soon. So and I can't env- envision like this entire rollout just for one track. I mean, like it, there has to be an album in the works. Yeah, 100%. And I'm here for it. I know we uh, had the the top five take on on him being like an artist part of that that discussion, and he responded. So I don't know. Maybe we motivated his ass to, to make this album. Who knows? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. What a life. <laughs> no, but shout out to him. Shout out to Big Boy. Uh, yeah, for, like the video, the visuals for that album for that for that song were fire. Um, and again, dude, I'm here for it because it's already going to be fucking November next on Monday. Like, there's only so much time left. Um, we definitely need to do like a quick, like maybe next a couple episodes, do like a quick, like, yo, know, top five albums of the year thus far. Um, mm-hmm. And I wonder if anyone's going to come in and just take the throne. Um, I think we both agree that Drake dominated the year and the end of it, but I don't think either of us really think CLP is the best body of work this year. Um, yeah. So I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen. November, December, and maybe Big Sean's the one to come and just grab that title. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, dude. All right. So, uh, so one thing though, I, I know we had, we added to the rundown late. So before we get out of here, I you get back to the uh, the concert. Um, your thoughts on the internet coming for French Montana? I think the meme was <laughs> um, was it Squid Game? Like like a Squid Game reference? Yeah, Squid Game reference. Yep. The other people know what what, what, yeah. what, uh, what popped up. So for those who don't know what Squid Game is, it's basically this popular Netflix series where... Have you finished it? I, I watched a few episodes. I have not, though. Okay, I got I to gotta, um, I gotta start it, let alone finish it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a pretty entertaining series. Basically, uh, I believe people who uh, owe debts to... Um, society, government or whatever? Yeah, society or like some crime mob or something basically have to play these games... Uh, childish games many of them where they get eliminated if they make a mistake so like i don't know if you guys have played green light red light or red light green light right where, but elimination yeah. means death yeah elimination means death like, <laughs> death too. you get your ass capped like your head just blown off like if you make the slightest mistake um so people made a meme where it was like these squid game uh executioner leaders saying name five french montana songs where no one else is featured and and the meme is suggesting that no one's able to do that and you would die if you were given that proposition so these memes like took over the internet obviously made their way to french and he's like clearly bothered by it because on multiple occasions he's listed out like all of his accolades and yeah platinum this platinum that stuff he's done on his own which is it's wild to me considering you know he's clearly doing something right if he's relevant to the yeah day. yeah 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 i think we played a few french montana songs yeah because like you know he always like again maybe like, we don't love the entire body of work but there's always at least one or two bangers like mm-hmm. yeah like yeah like at least i know one song for sure that has a feature like ain't worried about nothing we play on the band like i think twice and we're like yeah. yo that this song's a fucking banger um but do i i mean if it were you would you get annoyed I would, but I think it depends on like how self-aware you are about like your career and goals and everything. Because I don't know, not ev- I'm assuming not every rapper wants to be like the best rapper. Like I think Waka Flocka even admitted or something that he's not that good of a rapper. Oh, yeah, I think he admitted I'm a whack rapper. Like he's yeah, like, he's like I'm, I'm a whack not, rapper. I'm not. I just like right. they're like, why? Where have you been? It's like, bro, I made ten million dollars. I I'm done. Like that's all I was right? doing this for. Yeah. So like people like him and Takashi or whoever else might not give a fuck, but I guess French Montana, I mean, every like artist kind of has their, their kryptonite or weakness. And I'm sure 
this isn't the first time people have basically said, oh, French only has hits when he's like a feature or has features. So I'm sure like that's an insecurity that just came out because he yeah. had to go ahead and list all this stuff. Yeah, and also like that New York ego, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, you're not just gonna tell me I'm not like this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even if I don't believe it, there's no way you're telling me that, right? So, right. Um, and he does it. I mean, the joke is funny because there's some like these jokes are funny because there's some truth to it. Like, mm -hmm. we're not saying he's trash, but yeah, dude, it is hard to name five. Like, dude, I can't name five songs that he doesn't have at least a feature on, like one feature. And to me, I'm top five songs all have features so i think it's it's funny because there's some truth to it but then that means like he i think he's probably taking that we're downplaying what he is as an artist which i don't think yeah. really is the case like i think people right. still respect that you, know, you have at least five hits regardless of who else is on it with you yeah and, and to your point i don't think he's like crying in his bedroom throwing his phone and shit i, I think it is like the New York ego thing where he's like, let me talk shit back and like yeah. show him what I actually did and leave yeah, it yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, but that's a fire meme to put out though, bro, because that shit got fucking the whole internet like just stopped. Yep. Like, yo, yeah, what the fuck? I'm gonna die. <laughs> like <laughs> Did you notice though, like before that, now that I think about it, before that meme came out, I don't know if you saw, but like a couple of those hip hop pages were circulating and I don't know where it came from, but it was like, hey, let's not for, uh forget like French Montana had bangers in the past 10 years. And yes, I don't know if like dude, they pay for yes. this or what, but that was definitely academics circulating had that. around like a week Ac before. Bro, academics had a thing. I think that's why I played him a little bit at Columbia because academics had like an eight page post where it was like, don't forget about these hits, these bangers. And it was like all these songs. And then like literally like two days later, well, day five. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. fuck. Yep. So I definitely, I'm, th I'm beginning to think some random twi uh, Twitter user or whatever, Reddit or whoever saw that post. It was like triggered was like, by it. Yeah, triggered, made this meme, not thinking it was going to go that far. And then, of course, it just blew up. And it got back to French, but that's the fucking dream. One day. Yeah. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> um, all right, bro. Anything else you want to get into before we get into some uh, heat of the week and then what we got going on? Uh, no, let's dive right in. All right, broski. So, uh, yeah, you getting, it could be anything. Uh, so for Heat of the Week this week, anything that you heard in Colombia or you've been bumping since you got back, uh, what's one song that you've been loving right now? One song I've been loving, um, I mean, I really do like Big Sean's What a Life. What a Life? Uh, I think that song came at like a perfect time. It just really reminded me of Colombia, even though we didn't really play it at all, I don't think, because it came out like. I think it came out like either the day we got there yeah. or, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It wasn't something like that, but like the title and like even the lyrics, um, kind of hit home in, in different ways. So that track was super fire, nice. but of course, still bumping my two top favorite tracks from the trip, uh, selection by Tekka and diamonds dancing by young thug, Travis Scott and Gunna. Um, I think those ones just put me in a different kind of mood. Nice. Yeah, I'll definitely add the selection to that one. I'll add all three of them to the uh, the playlist. Um, so those are all good selection would have been mine as well, because that's on me. Like, I don't know. I was like, dude, why have I never... I think we spoke about it on the pod, but, like, I didn't think I actually, like, took a deep dive. I'm like, yo, little tech of Skrillex. I'm like, Skrillex is probably just looking, like, for a way to get back into, like, the, the limelight. Like, I didn't take it seriously. But yeah. like, yo, you played that shit, I was like, oh my God. And it's so short, I'm like, yo, play it again, play it again, just keep playing. <laughs> I think it was actually, it might've been my Heat of the Week, like fucking 30 episodes ago when that album first oh, came Oh no, out. cause I do have a Heat of the Week by you for Skrillex, but it's like Skrillex and Don Tolliver. Oh, okay. It was so that Maybe one. that was the case. Yeah, it was that one. Uh, but dude, for me, my Heat of the Week is gonna be Mac Miller, Off the Faces, um, mixtape it's a second song called here we go uh, i love the intro bro it's almost like a oath to like what you should be as a good human being and then the two references to like uh there's a couple references he has like one thing like hey, you spend your whole advance on two chains and a gucci verse it's like a gucci verse like uh -huh. that's just, just clever bro like it is just fun yeah. to listen to and again, with the context right like at 22 like Mac is like not a big name and Gucci relatively is Gucci Mane at that point. So it's just like yeah. a cool, like almost like a, a cool like time capsule bring you back to like where we were in 2014. Yeah. Um, and just a good, a, a good dope hip hop track, bro. Three verses, 
we don't usually get that anymore. So yeah, if you haven't checked the entire um, album, but if not, the here we go will probably get you uh, tempted to hear the whole thing. Nice. Yes, sir. All right, Broski. So um, yeah, dude, what we got going on coming up? I, I know we have a. We're done with interviews for October, uh, but we're working on a couple overseas interviews for November and December. Um, God willing, uh, a couple of DJs out there reached out, friends of the pod. So yeah, just put uh, put people onto a, a different kind of music scene. Um, but yeah, let other people know where they can get the merch. Find us. Let's get out of here. Sure. Um, yeah, you can get the, the merch on audio-theory.com. Um, I, I still have to order more because I only have one hoodie right now. Bro, it was so dope that yo, literally like, yo, like the fan pulled up and like everyone had a hoodie on. Like, I, I, I think I was just so drunk or tired to not like record everything. Cause it was like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to like not be on the internet or be on Instagram come November 1st. Like I didn't want to like post everything. But yeah. yeah, bro, like my boy's wife, my cousin, my aunt, I was like, yo, this is sick. So yeah. Like I'm not like we're not talking shit. Like this shit actually is super comfortable. So oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like w- w- like he said, we're not. I mean, obviously, we're trying to promote our own like brand, but I genuinely wear the hoodie like everywhere I go, just because it's so. It's like the perfect amount of uh, thin versus heavy jacket. Like I live in SF where it's super cold, still super warm, super comfortable. Um, I have zero complaints about it. It doesn't. It's not some cheap ass like quote unquote uh manufactured in in china so it's gonna fall apart after one wash yeah yeah no i washed i think actually my aunt i uh put in the dryer and it survived so again i highly recommend putting the in the dryer but you wash it'll be fine i wore mine to go clubbing in columbia like a fucking normal like nice outfit you know what i mean i was fucking mm-hmm. like getting compliments so yeah dude like yeah so cop the hoodie um and we got other shit we got the, the stickers right the stickers the t-shirts yeah stickers um, t-shirts and the hoodies um, and if there's anything else, I mean, we can definitely add more products to it. But for now, I think these are the core ones that, that everyone wants. Um, but definitely check it out. We have sizes for everyone. Uh, tune in every week. We've got a new episode every week. Obviously, the Spotify and Apple Music playlist with the Heat of the Week selections. One other thing I almost forgot is if you're listening to this on Friday, Friday the 29th, I will have already released my new single. Yes. Thirst Trap, um, which is a song that I wrote. Just I was actually on Instagram just thinking about like all the shit that people, including myself from time to time, do. And I'm like, why are we so addicted to this damn platform? Obviously, Thirst Trap is, has more of like a female connotation or whatever. Um, that's another thing I noticed from people that I know personally. Um, so I just decided to write, write the track kind of like thoughts that anyone would have using the platform like why am i doing this shit but i'm gonna yeah, do it yeah. anyways because the visuals you put up like were me. dope too like the like the trap like uh-huh. literally like the like the it's like almost like a like a mouse trap or like an elephant yeah. trap and everything yeah yeah appreciate that um so yeah it's a nice little catchy tune um i have a few more tracks on the way but i'm still like finalizing stuff but if you're listening to this uh it will already be out so feel free to check that out and let me know what you think nice and yeah and for sure send me the uh like a, a postable like a post worthy visual so i can we'll, we'll have one post just be that as far as a mini clip so for sure uh, awesome but yeah i completely forgot about that but we've been so out the fucking loop for like two weeks it's like it's almost <laughs> like that first day back at work like after like a month off it's like uh like yeah. i work here but like what do i do <laughs> yeah. i almost wasn't gonna release it this week because i was so exhausted i'm like fuck i gotta promote this shit and like post it and stuff but i'm i'm glad i have my my energy back somewhat yeah no dude it's gonna be it's gonna be good bro like that'll be your fifth release right uh yeah i believe so fifth release and i have uh two more complete songs that um i i don't know if i'll necessarily release both by the end of the year it depends on timing but i'm gonna try what feels right possible yeah yeah dude what's wild is like dude i was like on my run I think maybe yesterday, the day before, I was listening, like, Ignore Me came on. Um, so you're welcome for those two cents to your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, dude, it'd be sick if, like, either a listener or someone we knew or one of us knew someone, like, at ESPN. Like, I dude, I can easily see that song being, like, an intro to, like, a 
like like an NBA game, right? Like it's like of like of rookies who are like, at some point I'm gonna be too big that you won't be able to ignore. Like that, like I could like there's so many lyrics that could be like edited in such a way to like be going with like a player's highlights that mm -hmm. if like the right network picked it up, like I obviously it'll be great for them because it's a perfect song. But I think yeah. for you, like it could make that shit like pop, right? Because like yeah, I agree with you. Like I've listened to that song more, especially like in Colombia. Like, um, I actually heard the first time in Columbia when I went before, but then again on this show, we play like all the time. I was like, yo, that shit is fire, fire. But I think if it had like the right, like, like uh, commercial setting, it just yeah. fucking take off, right? I don't know, but I was thinking about like the NBA, cause like there's so many like, they play like Drake, what's next? And like, you get it, why, right? Cause there's lyrics that, you know, translate very well to that kind yeah. of lifestyle. I feel like, bro, I can see like a, like a LaMelo ball, like all these like young NBA players who like are undeniable talents, but they're still so young. Like if you played that song in the background, like yeah, that shouldn't be like a moment for obviously for everyone. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And um, I forget the artist's name, but he's also, well, not now, but at the time he was like an up and comer. I think he was still in like dental school and everything. Kind of just like a regular dude like us, but like he made music. And I think his song got picked up for like an NFL commercial or something big enough to wear like now that song is is just played everywhere kind of like that <coughs> damn I'm losing my voice that Justin Timberlake uh uh song that he made the they don't want me to this they don't want me to oh yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah, that song yeah, was yeah. Like they fucking played it for every sports thing so I mean that would be dope I don't know like necessarily how it approach reaching out but i'll have to do some research and see if there's yeah, like, some research bro like, and i'll do i was i was thinking about doing my own bro i was like just be a fire christmas gift i'm like yo i got you a deal with ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. um but yeah dude I, we'll both do research bro because i feel like uh like i i do i it was like sometimes like you know, we have these thoughts but the vision isn't clear like dude yeah. i vividly saw this like I, like me watching tv and like you like your song is coming on like it would make sense like it wouldn't be like this reach like bro like yeah. why are we playing this song like no no this this song makes perfect fucking sense for like up and coming athletes in any so yeah yeah we'll figure it out bro for put sure. it out to the universe yes sir um, all right bro see you let people know where they can find us and let's get out of here yep audio-theory.com episode every single week every friday uh if you would like to be interviewed uh, and promote your music and your musical journey feel free to hit us up on the dm or email us at audio theory media at gmail yep um and then again the spotify and apple music playlists are available on the site as well audio-theory.com perfect my dude well enjoy the concert be safe out there you going with uh with sarah or you going alone uh with sarah nice all right man enjoy that um let me know how it goes and uh we'll talk tomorrow dude love you Appreciate it. Love you too. Peace. Peace.